Hello, <clears throat> this is the Radio Geek, and I'm here today to talk to all you subscribers for just a little bit. You know, I was thinking the other day what it is that makes me like radio, and I kind of wondered what you thought. What is it about radio that you like? Do you ever tell somebody, they ask you what you do, what you do for a hobby, or what you're interested in, and you tell them about radio and you start explaining about DXing and radio dramas maybe and um, some other things you might be interested in radio and they get that glassy eyed look all over their face you know on their eyes and they kind of zone out and then you realize that they don't understand what you're saying and I'm gonna say this and if you understand what I'm gonna say next then you are truly a radio person and if you don't if you don't get it you're not a radio person and you just never will get it but there's something about radio and I would say that well radio is magic basically and you might say well if you're not a radio person you wouldn't get that you'd say well it's just a transmitter and a receiver and you know it's just radio big deal right but if you really understand radio, if you really understand the warmth of radio, I think you'll understand what I mean when I say that radio is magic. Um, I remember as a as a kid in the growing up in the 70s, and um, you know I I had a little clock radio that I used to tune up and down the bands with. And uh, I used to try to find uh, radio dramas. My uh, my dad got me interested in listening to radio dramas, and I always thought that was really neat to be able to sit back and listen uh, to a story, and you know, imagine what these people look like and what the scene looked like. You, know, you could have two different people listen to the same radio show, and they'd have totally different pictures in their heads. You know the. You know, the detective could be, a, you know, a red-headed guy with a black hat. And um, somebody else might think that it's, um, you know, um, a darker-haired guy with uh, no hat, you know. So it all would be different depending upon, um, you know, what, what their imaginations would bring. So I always thought that was really interesting. And then, like I say, growing up in the 70s, I used to listen to a lot of the CBS radio mystery theaters. Those were really uh, fascinating shows. And I remember the um, station that I would listen to, it would have it on relatively late at night. I think it was um, after the 11 o'clock news. So it was like 11.07 or something like that But by the time it came on. And I would listen to that and, uh, you know, fall asleep usually listening to it. But what I would do was I had a, uh, a little clock radio. And uh, I had a one of those shoebox tape recorders with the microphone. And um, I'd have it down there by the speaker of the radio and I'd record the um, CBS Radio Mystery Theater. And then if I, you know, fell asleep or something, I could listen to it later on a different night or whatever. And uh, I thought, you know, if I if I would record them, then I could listen to them again, you know. And uh, the hard part was I had uh, usually C60 tapes, which is 30 minutes on each side. Now, if you get rid of all the commercials on the CBS Radio Mystery Theater, you can get it in there in about 45 minutes or so. But what I would try to do is I would try to stay awake to get the first two acts on side one, the A side, flip it over, as soon as act three started, push play and record, and then I was golden. If I fell asleep, I was going to get the whole show. <laughs> now, a few times, I uh, fell asleep before I flipped the tape over, and so I didn't get the whole show. Um, but most of the time, I was able to do it. And uh, I used to always... Uh, hate it when our local station would have some kind of a sporting event on because you were never really sure if it was going to be on. Um, 
a lot of the times if the sporting event ended early enough, you know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes after uh, the show would start, they'd still play it. But other times they wouldn't. So it was always kind of a a guessing game on, you know, whether or not they were going to play it. So that's, I guess, when I really started um, DXing, I guess, because if my station had sports on and probably wasn't going to play it, then I would start tuning up and down the band and seeing if I could find another station that was playing it. And a lot of them, and a lot of times I could find another station um, playing it. And it could be in, you know, a different state and I could be listening to it. And I always thought, man, that's really cool. In fact, I started listening to other things at night when I turned the dial. And in fact, uh, I used to listen to uh, WBZ in Boston quite a bit at night. There was a, a guy on there, his name was Larry Glick. And he had a show on, and that was a really neat show. I really enjoyed that show. Um, I think he's since uh, passed away several years ago, but and he retired much longer before that. But, um, um, but yeah, I always enjoyed that. Um, listening to WBZ and Larry Glick and some of the other shows that would be on uh, late night. Uh, the hard part was, though, I was kind of a night owl, I guess, and I'd listen to these shows, but the problem was I'd have to get up I get on the school bus at like 6.30 in the morning, so <laughs> I was not the easiest one to wake up in the morning, for sure. But, uh, so that's, that's just the memory of radio and, and why I kind of like radio and uh, just the just the warmth of radio and uh, the DXing. You could be just, you know, sitting there in your bedroom, getting ready to go to sleep, and you're tuning up and down the dial and... You know, one minute you're listening to WBZ in Boston and you turn the dial a little bit further and you're listening to KDKA in Pittsburgh and uh, turn it a little bit more and you might be listening to a, a station in uh, Tennessee or Georgia. You could travel basically uh, the United States listening to different uh, stations and tuning into different programs that might be um, being played. So anyway, I, I just thought I would bring that up and just mention that and just ask you guys if you guys want to leave a comment and tell me and everybody else what are some of your radio memories what got you interested in radio and why do you like radio and what is it about radio that draws you to it um, and uh, what are you what does your family think of your radio um, hobby or addiction <laughs> I'm sure there's a wide variety of answers there. Um, nobody in my family seems to be able to understand it at all. Um, but that's okay because, you know, radio, at least listening, is really kind of a solitary thing for the most part. Because you have the radio, you're tuning the radio dial, you're looking for that distant station, you're, you're trying to pick it up out of the... Out of the um, noise floor you may even have earphones on trying to trying to get that weak station to log another one find something new that you haven't listened to before or you might just be interested in whatever the programming is so it, it's it's kind of a, a solitary kind of hobby i guess where it's um it's not like you get together with a bunch of people and you sit around the radio and tune up and down the band see what you can find at least i've never done that i don't know maybe there are people that do that but um, anyway, I just, I just thought I'd bring that up, just mention it to you guys, and just uh, get an idea of what, uh, what you uh, think about radio and, and why you like it, and what do, you, what do you do? What do you like to do? Do you like to AM, DX, shortwave listen? Um, what are you into? I know when I was a kid, I, I just made them listen to AM, and I was a teenager, of course. Listen to FM to listen to the music, right? You know, that's that's back way before the MP3s and all that and, and all this on-demand stuff. I mean, if you wanted to hear a song, you had to wait for them to play it on the radio. <laughs> and you weren't exposed to all kinds of music like you can be on the Internet these days. You know, it's pretty much, you know, your top 40 stuff. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it is a totally different era. So just, just what... Uh, what do you guys, what did you guys grow up on? Did you, did you make mixtapes? Did you record off of the radio music or radio dramas? Or were you even around when the original uh, old time radio shows were broadcast? Um, maybe there's some folks out there with those memories. 
just thought it would be an interesting topic to bring up and uh, see what uh, you guys have as far as memories and uh, let me know what you think of this if you like uh, these kinds of questions and getting a dialogue started in the chat I really uh, enjoy the comments that are left and uh, I like leaving comments on on um, uh, YouTube channels that deal with radio as well and I think we have a a nice uh, community of, uh, of people, of regulars, I guess. And, uh, you know, outside of, um, you know, YouTube and the Internet, if you were interested in radio and you like listening to radio and hunting for DX and maybe shortwave listening, they're, they're probably the odds of you finding someone else that was interested in the same thing that, that you worked with or you knew were probably not that great, but with the Internet and YouTube and... And so forth you can really um, you know kind of communicate with people of very similar interest so anyway I'll just let you guys leave your comments and let me know what you think and uh, what do you think about about radio and uh, what draws you to it and what do you like about it all right till next time this is the radio geek <laughs>